be in front of the camera. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good, uh, well, morning or afternoon, depending on where you are, or night, because I know we got a few people in Europe. And hello, Miss Scotland. I have a lovely follower in Scotland. She's so sweet. Um, so we are removing, I think this was delightful last time, right? Um, it's darker than fairy or afterglow. Fairy. This one's fairy? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm just using an old bottle, which is a lot paler on my last client. I think newer bottles, they tend to look a little bit more pigmented. It's normal with pink pigments. So eventually they, they have a small, shorter half-life. So pink pigments in general just fade a little bit over time. So this is just, you know, my basic 30-day Manny. And um, we are removing her old color and thinning it out. So I like to remove quite a bit of um, product just to make sure that it's nice and thin every time. Come around the side. I use a foot pedal. People ask what speed I go to. I really loosen up on my foot pedal right here. Like I could do this on my hand and it's not gonna hurt just like that. It's just very slow. And I feather up towards the cuticle. I'm on her nail, not on, uh, or on her gel, not on the na natural nail when I do that. And that allows me to make sure that I'm not creating any rings of fire or any damage on the natural nail. When you shorten it, hold your e-file straight up and down, put your speed high and go straight across. When you're doing this portion of the nail, if your e-file goes around their finger, we call it around the world, you're typically going a little bit too slow. So that is no bueno. Hello to a few of you. Looks like I have a few watchers and no commenters. If you're there, say hey. And I know a lot of people are working. It's Friday. Friday's a busy day for nails. Oh, hello. I saw a thumbs up pop up in my vision. I had a lot of people really like the angle of the last video. So when I'm done with this, I'll scoot the angle back down. Hello from Missouri. Hello, Miss Missouri. Have you seen the crazy blizzards and stuff people are getting? It's been crazy, yeah. yeah. Do you watch 911, the show? I don't think you do, we've talked about that before. Uh -huh. There's the one that's in Texas. They've been using the that major ice storm that they had a couple years ago as their main storyline for like the last four episodes and it's unreal like I can't imagine being in a place that would turn into that much ice yeah, but that's what happens when you live in the northwest you're not used to that kind of no, stuff no. I'm in bed I'm in the weather oh so sorry you're not feeling so good Sonia all right, so I'm going to show you guys real quick. I had a specific question on thickness of nails for how I'm doing stuff. So this is called down the barrel, and you can see how thin I'm bringing the product down when I'm removing the product. I'm going way down almost to the natural nail, okay? Do you guys see that? Very thin. You don't want to have a lot of bulk. Um, and then when I look down the barrel, you want to make sure that it's nice and thinned out pretty much everywhere. That's how you're going to make sure that your nails stay, stay good. Oh my, we have to apparently touch this a lot or it disappears. Facebook needs to fix their live feed comment thing. It's really weird. They change things on me and it really messes me up. I got a new thing that I've got to try to figure out, but it's supposed to let me stream on multiple platforms because some people aren't really on Facebook, but they're on Instagram or whatever. I just have to figure it out. This is not something I'm familiar with and... I like to pretend like I know what I'm doing when it comes to computers, but in reality, I really don't. Not on a lot of things. Yeah, and I think they change it up. And then yeah, it fast forwards, right? 
Right. It fast forwards right past you. Bottom of your shirt, sorry. Oh, this is my shirt my friends gave me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my friend Allie gave me this great shirt that Nail Techs would very much appreciate. It's hilarious. I have to wear it with, um, you know, certain people. Other people might think it's obnoxious, yeah. but I think it's awesome. I think it's hilarious. Yes. Um, and when I get this fan turned off, I will read it because I know y'all want to know. So this cool t-shirt says, nail technician, it's here, hourly rate, 100 minimum, 150 if you supervise, 175 if you assist, 200 if you're working on it first, and 250 if you give advice. <laughs> it's funny. I like it. All righty. Let me get my padding. I really use these for... Because my arms are resting on them all the time. I use different stuff, like soft landings and stuff is really nice. If I did acrylic, I would probably use soft landings all the time. Um, but it's more for... Uh, there we go. I think this was the angle that people were enjoying lately. Most of mine have always been, like, straight down. So we will do this. All right, here's pusher. Hello friends. So I get all my implements out and dry them off because they've all been sitting in my Let's Touch, which is my preferred um, disinfectant. It's hospital grade disinfectant. And why I like it is because um, I clean my stuff and I can leave them in there overnight and I get no resting, which is really great. So it is... Um, very concentrated though. So it seems really expensive when you buy a big one because they're like 70 bucks for a big container, but it'll last you a long time because it's a very concentrated solution that you mix with water. All right. So she's browsing on her phone. So what I do a lot of times is if people are doing that, I'll just go ahead and prep one hand and then I'll switch to the other. Um, Sometimes they're talking to people that they need to for work or whatever. I don't get too crazy about all of that. I just keep one hand then and work on the other one. So it's totally fine. Sometimes they're looking for the nail art that they know that they saved on their phone. I'm like, I know I have this. This is the 2S bit. What speed is that? This is a foot pedal. So I can lift my foot on and off. Again, it's not so um, so high that I it would hurt my skin even to do it. It's probably like a medium speed, I would say. Um, not super cranked high, not super cranked low. I know that um, some of my friends that I've taken classes from in um, like Sweden and stuff... They crank their device all the way high when they do this. And I'm, I kind of like it more of a medium speed, actually. But that's more of a preference situation. But this is my favorite bit. Lifts up that cuticle really nicely. Gets right in there. Lets you get into that corner. And dust. Okay. Let's switch. That was my foot on my foot pedal. Hmm, how's the world of um I had it on the tip of my tongue. P Pilates, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm like, I know what you do. The word is coming. Yeah, have you talked to Cheryl lately? Yeah, in fact, her, one of her best friends, and I think it's really their kids are best friends. Right. So then, you know, their families are best friends, but more the kids. Um, they, as she asked me yesterday, because we're going to go to Palm Springs uh, in the beginning of March, and she said, are you going to see Cheryl while you're there? And I said, I haven't talked to Cheryl since, like, last spring. I know, she's been gone. And she said, I think that um, they're just mainly in California. Yeah. 
so yeah, she's yeah. She's like a ghost. I haven't heard from her. Oh well, no, it's been, been gone. Enjoying their California oh, yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Why not? That's where you want to be. Be where you want to be. Yeah, exactly. Jenna came for a while too, so I loved having them both. Mm hmm. Yeah, she's so sweet. I can't believe she's already done. I mean, I remember when she was like graduating, and then then it was like, oh, fast forward, now you're graduating college. I'm like, yeah. what? Because time goes fast, people. Yeah, all of my clients that had kids in college, the last of them are seniors now. It's crazy to think about, but most of my clients, I'm in my 15th year, and most of them are somewhere in the like 7 to 14 years that they've been with me. So we see a lot of changes in their life. Totally. Absolutely. I can hear it go up and down, yes. I'm glad you love the bit. Melissa says, I love that bit. Thank you for introducing it to me. Do you do all your e-file work in forward? Yes and no. I would say 99% of the time I can do it in forward. There occasionally is someone that has a corner, just the way maybe the corner of their cuticle is, like it, it's like impossible to do it in forward in this corner. Um, so sometimes I will switch it over and put it in reverse. It's really just kind of like if I feel like that's like a client thing, like it's just their nail, that one spot needs me to flip it in reverse, so I will. Um, it's just kind of getting all the stuff that's really hanging out that'll get in my way. Does anyone know how to make the comments stop disappearing? off of a thing. It's very annoying. It used to not do that. Okay, so right here she's got some thick skin. So one of the things you can do is pull it back and use your bit on a low speed and just buff it. Just like, you know, you would for a toe that has a thick spot, anything like that. This is a corner like this. If you wanted to flip it in reverse, you could. Make sure your speed turns down all the way. And then you can go backwards and push that corner out. So if you feel like you need to do that, you totally can. And some people, I definitely need to do it. Hers, she doesn't really need it so much. Um, but if someone does, definitely do it. This is the, before someone asks me, because I know they will, this is the Stalix uh, Smart 30 5 millimeter. I love the Stalix implements. They are fabulous. I have so many more Stalix products now. So if you are looking for a certain implement and you're like, I want it to be a little bit longer jaw, or you like the, this one's a spring. There's the, um, the traditional kind, lots of those. We've very popular. I think that's the expert 90 or smart 90 or something like that that um it's really popular so but they're really nice and sharp you don't have to worry about it not doing its job if it starts getting to where you're pulling on skin when you go to do this that's when you want to change your nipper get a new pair That is that. Time for filing. And she chose the new color, which they just came in. So if you pre-ordered, they are on their way to you. Um, when I have some time, I will do a unboxing and do some comparisons because they're definitely some um, great new colors. Um, it's hard to explain in a way until I show people, but like juxtapose for people that are very familiar with their Luxio colors is like a darker engagement, which I know is gonna be really popular, that kind of nice turquoise color. 
I love that you're showing the shorter length model today. Yes, well, most of my most of my models are shorter length. This is a pretty standard client, I would say. Almost everybody wears their nails more of this length. So this is going to be your typical client. Um, Shayla is just fun, so and she always does my nails, so it makes it really easy because people are always like, oh, how do you do your nails? And since she always wants to do my nails, we do it that way, but she does wear them pretty long, so when I do videos with her, techniques are different than when I'm doing videos with someone of your length, which is lovely. That's what got me with Cheryl, and she had the longest, most blinged out nails. <laughs> yeah. Your nails. Yeah, I did some beautiful sets on her. There was a couple that I was just like, oh, they're so pretty, and walked out with, uh, you know, just bling all over. Yeah, it was, it was art. Yeah, thanks, good. Yeah, I took some pictures of hers. They've been some of my favorites that I've done. So. Megan says she loves engagement. I do too. It is a popular color. If you're wanting a Tiffany blue, so, and you're not sure which one to get, obviously there is one called Tiffany. Tiffany came out first it was one of our first colors and people would say it's not really tiffany blue it's too blue to be tiffany it's tiffany if you look at a box from tiffany's it's actually quite green and so accents decided that they would fix it and tiffany would be the green version that is the color of your tiffany's box and they would they came out with engagement which is the robin's egg blue that people want when they want a robin's egg blue so if people come in and they're like i want tiffany blue a lot of time they really are looking for engagement they're not actually looking for the green version so having both of them is good because they're definitely different colors um but if you have people that are going for tiffany blue you might find that they are actually going for engagement but the new juxtapose is the is a darker version of engagement, which is great because it's a great like teal color. So I will try to get those, do an unboxing of those once I get everything caught up. I've got more to more shipments to get out um, when I have a break today. So that's priority one, and then I'll and then I'll try to get to an unboxing. So if it doesn't happen today, sometime next week I will. And comparisons with different colors we already have so you guys have an idea of where it falls on your whole line so I do even though I used a bit I still always go around with the point of my file or the round part of the file that's why they're shaped this way and I want to make sure that that's prepped really well and blended really well all the way into the cuticle because that's going to give you the best longevity for your nails so your clients can easily go a month without a bunch of problems um, You've got to do that really well. So I use the 180 side. Um, and this is the accents files. They do feel like they've gotten a little bit better than they used to. But I've, if you've heard some of my last videos, you've heard me talk about files quite a bit. Um, so if I feel like I need to really get in the corner, I can use the 100 side and then flip it over. And most of the time I'm using the one, just the 180 side to buff this. And you're just getting up here and you're just really pushing it back. The more you work on the cuticles and push the cuticles back, the more likely your clients are able to go a full week without even seeing even a smidge go out because the cuticles first will recede back down over what you've just done. And it's almost going to blend in and you're not going to see any grow out for a week. Like when someone comes in at two weeks, it's almost hard for me because there's such little grow out that I'm getting too close to the cuticles. So I really prefer people to come in at the three-week mark um, just because it actually is, there's enough grow out to work on. Otherwise, there's like, no grow out so three week four week any of that's fine but two week is almost too soon if you are putting product back as far as you can and you should alicia said i love the way that you prep by hand filing too not just the e-file making this more typical practice myself yeah i i can't do everything i want to the level that i want just with an e-file. I take off the bulk, I shorten, but I'm I'm an, I'm a hand filer from the beginning. I mean, I hand filed for 8 years, I think, before I picked up an e-file. I took a couple classes from Vicky, my old friend Vicky Peters, and 
you know, I was scared to use it, like super scared. And she's like, just shut up and do it. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. And she's like, you are not going to have a long enough career if you're hand filing everything for 20 years. And I'm like, <sighs> freaking out. And so I was like, fine. So I took classes from her. And at the time, you know, this is 20 years ago, I guess it'd be 15 years ago when the, all this went down. Um, I was still doing a lot of French. It was still very in style. And so I did a lot of like backfills. This was before gel polish even existed. Um, so I did a lot of, a lot of backfills. And so when I first started using e-file, I was just using it to rem shorten the nails and remove the white tip. Shorten the nails, remove the white tip. I probably did that for like a year before I even got anywhere near the cuticle at all. And I, it was probably a good eight years longer before I discovered this 2S bit that I use on the cuticle. And I tried other bits and I did not like how they worked. If you're using a flat bit, the problem is, is that this is not a flat shaped nail. So it's great for toes. Like the 459 is what I use to prep toes because they're flat and you can just roll it back and forth and you've prepped the whole nail really nicely. It doesn't work for this shape of a nail. When you use a football bit, you're getting into that shape much more consistently because that's really the shape of a nail. So I was big on that. I, you know, they have those tiny, tiny prep bits and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to make a line. I can just see it now. So I don't love that either. So it's, it was a long time before I discovered that one bit that I so very much love. And I know a lot of you have gotten it now. I try to always have plenty in stock because, you know, someone will go, oh, okay, it's time to toss all mine, get new ones. And then they get six. And so if I don't have a bunch in stock, now there's nothing. So I'm trying to make sure I always have those in stock for you guys. They are essential to getting a really, really good prep and a really, really good thing. So as I'm filing, I'm angling down because as you see, I want to keep this nice shape, but also I want to keep it very thin. I'm just leaving the littlest amount of gel on her nail. So again, I'm going to look down the barrel so you guys can see it is almost just her natural nail, just the slightest amount of gel. You want to keep it really thin. And the reason for that is because I'm about to go over the whole nail with more gel. And if you don't take down bulk and take down the majority of the gel, you're going to end up just making nails that are thicker and thicker every time. So it doesn't take a lot of work. It just, it's essential. So scrub the nail plate really good. You don't want to get all over the skin and pull oils off the skin. So put your thumb on top of the nail plate as you scrub. And that will cleanse it really well. And I'm just using a combination of um, prep and wipe and acetone. It's about 75% mm, or so prep and wipe and a little bit of acetone. All right, so this is the wipe that I just used. A lot of times I'll just flip that over like this and that way I can use this side of it that's still a little bit damp to clean my brush because the little bit of dampness on the brush is very handy to keeping your bristles all together nicely. All right, now, our lovely Trinity. Hey, Connie. Hey, everybody. We just had a influx of people come and join us. All right, so prepping is totally done. I'm gonna go straight to my Trinity. I'm using the 106 brush, and I'm just gonna push down on the nail, and I'm gonna pillow from one side to the other, pillow, 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 and then I'm gonna remove any excess if I need to, which typically pinkies I'll often need to remove excess, and then I'm just brushing very lightly over the nail down. If you press too hard, you'll make indents. Then I'm gonna go along the front, and remove the excess because there's always a little bit of excess that you do not need on the front. You wanna keep that really thin. All right, we're gonna go ahead in three seconds. Did it get moved? No, just my coat was slipping in the way. Ah, coat. All right, go ahead and come on out. So it's just three seconds in and it's to freeze it and then you go to the next one. Again, I'm pushing the gel down just to start it moving and then I'm pillowing. You wanna leave about a credit card thickness between your gel and your uh, cuticle, and that's going to allow your color to get into that spot. And when you do that, that makes for the thinnest grow out area possible. Okay, checking line of light. Okay, three seconds. One, two, and out. Okay, next one. Push down. 
pillow from one side to the other. And brush down. So I'm keeping my brush completely flat when I do this. I'll try to move the camera in a second so you can see from that angle a little bit better. Making sure I don't have too much on one side or the other. Keeping it nice and thin. This is enough product to have a nice, strong nail. You're not gonna break nails with this product if you are applying it the way that I'm doing it. It works fabulous. Right. Okay, I'm gonna try to do a sideways shot here. See if we can show y'all from a sideways point of view a little bit better. Okay, again, push down. Pillow, pillow, pillow. Okay, and then I'm going to hold it flat. And brush down. Okay, check the sides. Brush down the front. It's a little piece of lint there. Okay, go ahead, three seconds. So hopefully that looks decent enough for you. Okay, and now the thumb. Hello. Okay, so if you look at it, all the products right there. Then I'm going to hold my brush flat. And I'm just lightly touching the top of that pillow and pulling forward. Not being inside the gel floating on top of it. Now, if you do something like that and you end up with a little divot there, you can grab a little tail of gel and drop it right there. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of a wiggle and a pull. That's just going to fill in that little spot perfectly. All right. Do three seconds and then you can cure the whole time. I need the other hand. <laughs> All right. Pillow. Okay, so when I did that one, I did touch this corner just a smidge. So make sure you use your orange wood stick. I always have them with my brush. Go ahead and put that in, three seconds. I always have my orange wood sticks. My brush sits on top of it, just like this. So when I go to grab my brush out of my drawer, I grab my brush and a new stick. And so they just both come out at the same time. So it's always on my table. And I do sell orange wood sticks if you guys have a hard time finding them. Sometimes I find them and they're really expensive. So I try to keep them in stock on my store at a good price. So again, brushing down. Brush, 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 brush. And it pulls down the excess from the front. Because if you don't do that brushing on the front, sometimes it's like smooth and then you get a bump on the front. So by brushing that down, it really helps. Hello, I can't wait to take your class at camp. Oh, thanks. What brush am I using? I'm using the 106, 106. It is the flat brush. It is my favorite brush for doing this. If you use a gel brush, that's an oval gel brush, gel brushes that are oval have a belly and a belly is gonna make lines in your nail when you do this part. So you need to have a flat brush if you're going to do this kind of glossing technique where you can get it on there perfectly smooth without any finish filing. If you're having a hard time getting it on there perfectly smooth without finish filing, check and see what brush you're using because a lot of time people are not using this flat brush and they're using a brush that has a belly and the belly creates divots. So to get it totally smooth and work in there, it's got to be, got to be a flat brush. Flat brushes are important. Samantha said she loves watching me work. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah, when are you going to start a YouTube on Pilates? I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of that out there. It is amazing. I know. 
Can you imagine the servers that YouTube must have to store all of the videos that people upload? I don't look at it. I mean, I, I do look at YouTube, but I have, you know, certain things I go and look at, and I can't imagine people that spend a lot of time and have a lot of interest on there. Yeah. This week I've been looking at appliances. <laughs> because yes, it's a great resource for some Yeah. Time. I mean, what we are a year out, but yeah. they are going up. At noon today is the last time to order Sub Zero or Wolf or anything without a five percent price increase, and they already are a fortune. So I certainly don't yeah. want a price increase. So I was yeah. doing a ton of research trying to figure out is this really the one that I need because we want to do a column fridge in the new build, and there's only like three that are really well rated. So it was What's a lot the of is that the so. It's a fridge only, so we'll put our freezer, just the regular freezer only, in the pantry, and so the kitchen will be just fridge only. Oh. So it's um, it's got 26 cubic feet, which was the big thing. I wanted a lot of space yeah. because when we have parties and whatnot, I'll do like seven-layer dip and stuff like that, and so having the space is really essential. Then I don't have to go put it in the beer fridge, you know. Um, so and then how about the freezer in the pantry is that a big freezer yeah a it's one? yeah it's about the same size it's the same like 36 inches um it's but it's separate yeah so it's a lot more space I think it's like a 21 cubic foot freezer so between the two we'll have tons of space for yeah. stuff but oh my gosh and it's like buying a car delivery because that's what you hear from a lot of people it's like we ordered it last summer right it's right it's a year out which is fine because we're just starting foundation stuff now so I'm perfectly content with that but I asked him also I found one um one of the appliance places near me, I called three of them and talked to them. And one of them will hold everything until we're ready for delivery. Oh, so that was really? super nice. So if we're, you know, if it comes in in February, we're not ready to put it in until March. They'll just hold on to it and then they'll yeah. come install it. All right, friends, this is Aloof. This is the one of the brand new colors. It's kind of a gray that has maybe a slight taupe undertone. Like I feel like it's not so black gray. So it's a nice, really nice neutral. I'm going to get real close to that cuticle, as close as I can, and hope that it doesn't flood is really what it comes down to. But I try to get it really close. Again, the closer you can get to the cuticle when you're doing your color, um, the better your grow out's going to be. It is hard to watch people post pictures sometimes, and the nails that they're doing already look two weeks grown out. I'm like, oh, my clients would not be happy because that's important they want the grow out time that's how they're able to go longer you know and some people go oh if they go longer my income's going to go down I said not necessarily like you're you're doing it wrong if that's the situation because time is money your clients don't want to have to come in all the time right you got things to do yeah push it up towards corner So this is a semi-translucent with one coat. So if you're if you're familiar with Luxio, you know that most of the gels like one coat and it's super, super solid. This one, if you're real careful with how you apply it and someone wants a semi-translucent kind of taupey gray, that's going to be this color. So it still has a really good coverage, but it can give you a slight bit of that semi-translucent look if it is so desired. I think I bumped this right here a little bit. And then the second coat is going to definitely give us a full coverage. Alrighty. So this is a loof. So it's a neat color. It's definitely different. When I go and do the unboxing, that's when I get out some of the other colors that you guys are used to um, and do some comparisons so that you're like, okay, I really like shadow or wisp, but I want a darker version of it. And that's what you get with this one. But I do feel like it does have a little bit of that warm undertone, which is nice. But I got to do my nails for a trip next weekend. And I'm like, do I do them with the new colors? There's a really bright purple and a really bright blue. I don't know what to do yet. Yeah, Mexico colors are going to be... I know, they should be bright, right? Bright, yeah. So I haven't decided yet. I'm like, I could just do like an all-out marble with like this bright purple and blue and turquoise. And I haven't done just a swirly. It, I mean, it's so easy. I feel like it's cheating. 
<laughs> because it's like it's it's a cool color but it's really pretty I just leaned on it's hard to get everything in sorry moved you too high in camera shot without bumping your other nail sometimes I can never decide what to do with my nails right. Yeah, see, I totally bumped this one. These all look okay. So when I bumped it, I redid it, but now I've got product in the cuticles. So get that stick out before you put it in the light. Check them all. They can go in. Come on out. Now I had a request to see down the barrel and then I had someone else request something and I should have written it down because now I can't remember. <sighs> Remind me. If you've recently requested something and I said, no problem, I'll show it on video, send me a message because I forget. And I really need to start taking notes when that happens so I can try to help everyone because that is my goal. Yeah, it'll be nice to get a new color. I love these sparkles on my nails, but because there's not a lot of design going on with it, yeah, yeah. they get really buffed and messed up too easy when I'm doing nails, and there's nothing to kind of hide the fact that they're buffed and messed up so easily. So then I just stick another coat of top coat on it. So I think I've got about four coats of top coat on my nails right now. So they're, they keep getting thicker because I just keep adding more top coat. So it'll be good when I can... That. Change it up, yeah. Well, I'm taking my friend Allie's shaping class this weekend, and so I'm sure I will be messing with them for that. So I'm just checking this, making sure that there's good. Sometimes I'll pull this down if I feel like it's shrink a little bit, which sometimes with these more clear-based colors, you will notice slightly maybe a little bit of shrinking. No, you shouldn't see a ton. I mean, you guys are seeing exactly what I'm seeing. Um, but with a clear based color as opposed to one that's super highly pigmented, it's a little slipperier. So it will sometimes slide up a little bit. So that's why I just kind of hit the tip there. And that will be all it needs. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, sealing everything in. And, if, you know, back in the day, that was like the big thing. Oh, you have to cap all the edges. Cap, 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 cap. Well, I file the edge of the nail right at the end. So if I was worried about capping, I would be removing the cap every time. You don't have to worry about capping. If your product's staying really well, capping is not necessary. So, yeah, so ordering the fridge is a year. Okay, I'm like, all right, honey, you got a year. My fridges are coming. Yeah, <laughs> the clock's yeah, ticking now. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, but it's so stressful. I can't tell you. I think I had three nights this week where I was up till after 2 a.m. just researching, researching, yeah. researching, reading reviews and stuff. And I, yeah, that's a big purchase. It's, it's, it's a car. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And so I got in one of the groups I'm in. I'm in like a group of people all building. And I said, all right, sell me on your Sub-Zero. Yeah. Like, tell me why it's worth it, which... Yeah. You know, theoretically, the other two column refrigerators aren't much cheaper. So it's not like I could really base it on price because yeah. they are all ridiculously yeah. expensive yeah. if that's how you want your fridge. Right. Um, but one of them's like, well, me and my mom go get produce from Costco at the same time and we split it. And she takes half and I take half. And a week later, hers is starting to die out and mine looks brand new. And I'm like, oh. She's like, I've had lettuce last four months before. I've had strawberries last three weeks. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, and you're what telling me words. Starts? It's a sub-zero. It has this NASA scrubbing feature that every 15 minutes it cleans the air of all kinds of bacteria and gases. Go ahead and put that in. Yeah, it cleans the air of bacteria and gases that food that's um, like produce give off yeah. and prevents it from causing mold and, and decay. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. So, 
that was it. You just bought a fridge last night. Hey, we're in the same boat. Did you look at three in the morning for many, many days? Because, oh my gosh, I'm just glad it's done because it was too much, too much, too much. I don't like, it's too stressful. Like if they were, you know, something that I wasn't gonna be using every day forever. And that was the other thing is that some of the people are like, well, the fridge, the sub zero in my last house I had for 23 years. And now I've been in this house for 10 years and they it, I haven't had to do anything with any of them. And I'm like, well, those are words I like. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing in my life right now, you guys. Building the house from the back end. <laughs> now I get to look at what we need for our in-floor heating and order those supplies. And Jared's out on the, on the excavator finishing out leveling so that he can start doing footings and running the electric from the pole and stuff. So... Hopefully it will start moving along. So I'm using my Luxio Gloss. It's starting to get a little bit low, so that's why I keep having to go back into the container. When it starts getting annoying and I can't get any more, I get a new bottle and I put this bottle to the side. Well, there's still product in it, so don't toss it. Um, definitely keep a hold of your gloss. Um, and then after you've used your new one for like a week, then you can flip your old one on top of your new one. And there you go. And if you combine your bottles like that very often, um, I saw a trick someone used the other day where they used the stand from Ugly Duckling for their, they have gel in a uh, squeeze bottle. So for some people that like that kind of a technique, um, there's the squeeze bottle gel. And the holder for that works perfect for sticking a bottle upside down and another bottle underneath. So I'm like, oh, I love little tricks like that. So... I'm going to grab myself one of those holders so I can combine because I do the same thing with color. If I'm getting low on a color, the color's not gone. You maybe have 10% still left. Do you want to waste it? No. So I will save it, use a new one for a little while. And then when I feel like I've used enough out of the new one, then I will flip it upside down, combine, give it a good mix and you're good. It's a little bit more difficult if the gel polish you use is a solvent based gel polish, meaning it smells like nail polish and it has solvents in it. The reason it's a little bit trickier in that situation is because just like nail polish, as solvents, um, or as your bottle is opened, your solvents are dissipating over time. That's why solvent nail polishes get thicker in the bottle because the solvents are going away. So that's why they create polish thinner, things like that, to try to help. You're actually supposed to put polish thinner in like a drop every time you use it so that um, it never gets thick. It's kind of too late to save it if it's already gotten thick. Um, just checking these, making sure they're good. Okay. And so, but otherwise, this is just, you know, well used top gloss. Alrighty. And this one's done. So I'm going to grab more here. Oh, gotta love the squeak. That's how you know you're a really good one. Our old fridge that we're getting rid of is made by RCA. It's almost 30 years old. And yeah. RCA isn't even around anymore, right? I think we're done with our good players. <laughs> right, right, totally, absolutely. All right, so removing the gloss, then I'm going to come along, and I always file the edges and, and the front thumbs. and round her thumbs. It's a good, she always wants them good and rounded because she feels like she pokes things, and she doesn't. Okay. And there's just a small smidge of color that got here. So very lightly, lightly, lightly file. You don't want to go crazy. This is why it's also very important to take those edges off your files really, really well. And then she likes them just a little bit rounded on the edge. So to do that, bring your file underneath the nail as you file the edges. And that will let you soften your corners really nicely and more evenly than if you were trying to just go back and forth, you end up with a more rounded nail. But if you're doing a square with just rounded edges, just lean your file backwards and it will pick up that little bit of edge. So I always hit both sides underneath, make sure that there's no gloss that maybe has gone down into that area or color, make sure everything is nice and sharp and smooth and even. Again, see that little bit of, of color that went there? You want to make sure that that's not something that's going to bother your client or something they can pick up. So just doing this little bit of filing at the very end of your service, you can really get a nice finished nail. 
extension with your product, can you build out the length if the client wants an extension or put over a tip? Yes, I would use the Trinity so that the base that I used um, is definitely strong enough to build enhancements. So you can put a form on the nail and extend it or you can put a tip on. Either way is fine. So now I'm coming up underneath at an angle and removing any excess and it also removes some of the natural nail on the free edge. This is important. Let me tell you why, if you don't know why it's important. Because as the nail um, grows out over the next month, the nail's growing and they curl in, right? And so by removing that little bit of nail on the tip, you're eliminating the part of the nail on the tip that gets dried out when it curls in and separates. So if you have clients that get some separation and then they pick at it and then they peel that nail off from underneath, that's like a, such a huge no-no. See a little bit more product here. Oh, let me get in that frame. I'm like showing you and then I can't show you. There's a little bit of gel right here. So again, I'm just going to take my file and very lightly go around the side. And you, I mean, you saw my technique. I get over there really close. And so if it does get down the side, all you have to do is just smooth that out and it's fine. Okay. Come up underneath and she likes it extra round. So when I'm doing an extra round, that's when you're gonna be filing from the sides like this. On the other nails, we don't need to go quite as round. And so that's when I just come in from the front. Go back down, okay. Thumb's a little trickier there. So again, coming up from the front and curling up. If someone has, um, they're doing more of a coffin shape or something like that, when you're doing that uh, finishing portion at the end, right under the tip, um, you can use the uh, cone bit, which I believe I showed in one of my last videos. Her nails are a bit more naturally flat, so using just my sanding band is perfectly fine. Um, you don't need to switch bits for that. There's no need to switch bits if there's no need to switch bits, right? <laughs> Come in on the sides, come in from the front, come in from the sides, and I'm just doing this on the bottom and on the sides, and that's going to give me my nice finished appearance. And I'm going to flip this over and show you guys what it looks like before I use the e file at the end. And I'll show you why the other reason is for thickness. You want the nails to be nice and thin when you're finished. Let's see if we can show these really well. So if you look at the thickness here, let me see your other hand. Uh, I'll just do this one and then we'll flip it back over. But if you can see the thickness right now of where it's at, this is what the finished product is. If I leave it like this, I'm not gonna be happy and they're not gonna be happy, it's too thick. So when you come up underneath at an angle, you're going to remove thickness. You're gonna remove the bit of the natural nail that tends to curl down and cause separation and you get a nicer finish that way. So last step, really important. Again, if their nails are much more of a C-curve, then you can use a cone bit. Um, otherwise, just grab your sanding band and use that again. Okay, oil, oil, oil. This is my, the Kucha oil I love, and I just added a whole bunch of new flavors, which I've seen a lot of you take advantage of that this week. So there's mango and lavender, and so when I run out, then it's like, hmm, which one do I want now? Um, but I rub the oil all over their finger. That's part of the process of my finishing. It helps rehydrate, because if you look, you know, you've got the dry skin and everything there. So you rub the oil over their whole finger and they're not gonna feel like their hands and fingers are so dry. And part of it's because I've been messing with alcohol on their hands a ton. But then you get a really nice finish. Nails. And also, the, when I first started doing it, it was years and years ago, and it was because after I would finish the nails, if I didn't do this, and you know, you're wiping, and by the time I would get to the 10th nail, maybe there's a little bit of excess gel on the wipe, and the pinky would end up being kind of dull, and people would come back and they're like, my pinky's dull, and I'm like, there, and it just removes that little bit, so that's kind of how it started, but now it just, I feel like you just get a much nicer, when they walk out the door, their hands look supple, and hydrated, and pretty, and there you go. There is a loof and a fill, and hopefully you guys learned something, or at least enjoyed hanging out with me today. 
and Paula, and we will talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend. Bye.